Welcome to Muskegon Channel. It's Andy O'Reilly and today I'm on the campus of Muskegon Community College. This is Ari Norris and we're going to find out a little bit about Ari here in a second. This is a sculpture Ari just unveiled out here at uh, Muskegon Community College. First of all, thank you Ari for taking a couple of minutes to come thank on. Thank you very much. Appreciate I had no idea you were a local guy. Yeah. Local guy? Reed <laughs> Puffer grad? Yeah, and MCC alum as well. Is that right? <laughs> so, all right. I, how does how does a sculptor get started in the world of, of sculpting? Tell me how this um, gets all underway. Initially, uh, I took the experiential learning course here at MCC, a trip to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, over a weekend. And on that trip, I met Gary Castile, who is the last living artist that has artwork on the battlefield there. It's okay. the world's largest sculpture park okay. because of the monuments, statues. So I got training from him for two years following that. So and, it's an apprenticeship. Uh, an apprenticeship, yeah. yeah. First and only apprentice of Gary Castillo. Is that right? Yeah, correct. What, what, <laughs> as a young young person, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can train for and learn mm -hmm. and be a part of. And you can learn it all here at MCC. Yeah, Great perfect. thing. But what, what, what inspires you to be a sculptor? Uh, a love of history, definitely. Uh, my dad is an art teacher okay. here at MCC. and also art history, so kind of being raised in that and uh, falling in love with history, definitely. That, that so it's finding inspiration in that, I think. Tell me about Norris here. <laughs> Tell, uh, th this yeah. is brand new. How, how long has this been up here at, at MCC? As of yesterday. Really? All right, <laughs> yes. so it's just eight, great. So tell me about Norris, what, what's the significance here? Mm. Doris Rucks taught both at MCC and Grand Valley. Uh, she graduated high school at 13, got into college at 14, um, graduated from Columbia, and kind of dedicated her life to social justice, okay. fighting towards social justice here in Muskegon. Right. Served on the Department of, I gotta look up the name of it. <laughs> For 45 years, okay. yes, yeah, there here you know, yeah, you know, local. Yeah. <laughs> and up until, you know, the weeks before she passed away. Wow. So. <laughs> and now she's, and tell, tell me about this piece, bronze? Yes, correct, okay. bronze, cast in Illinois. The time this takes to do, tell me about the time. <laughs> uh, it was sculpted in a clay for about two months there in Gettysburg, my second summer. So I was able to have critique during it, you know, during the process. When getting back to Illinois after it was completed in the clay, it was cast in a, a silicone mold and then replaced with wax and then the lost wax process to turn it into bronze. That took about six months at the foundry. Tough to do? Very. Yeah. <laughs> is it hard to be critiqued when you're working on something like that? I mean, is it, is it difficult to have somebody say to you, do this different, do that different? Because I mean, it's an art and it's a, it's a business too. So yes, I get definitely. it. Definitely. You know, is it tough? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's all positive. So, you know, knowing that it's going to make the piece better, yeah. you know, in the long run. I mean, it's all in the eyes, basically. Once right. you get those eyes right, that's that's his biggest critique. Your, is, <laughs> is, it, is it your first big piece on display anywhere? First public sculpture. Is it really? Yeah. Yep. So that's got to feel pretty good. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And it's <laughs> here at home too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and she was instrumental in getting the building behind us as Stevenson well. The Stevenson Center. Center. Awesome. <laughs> awesome stuff. So you've got another big sculpture unveiling coming up in November, <laughs> and this one's kind of making a big a big yeah. splash as well. The Boogie Woogie Boogie Boy yeah. is who we're talking about. Clarence Ziles. Zileman. 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 <laughs> I don't know Clarence. I mean, I'm getting on the older end of the spectrum here. I, I don't know Clarence or anything. Tell me a little bit about the story of Clarence. Yeah, sure. Clarence Zillman uh, enrolled in the U.S. Army as a trumpeteer, a bugler, uh, after the hit song had come out, sure. the Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, and had kind of lived the role. He moved to Chicago, just like the song spoke about, trained on the streets of Chicago as, you know, a jazz trumpeter. Uh, his career kind of followed that, and in his 40s he enlisted. So okay. the U.S. Army then named him as the Boogie Woogie Bugle. So there's still time for me to enlist? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two years till I'm 50. I can still join. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. they take me. Right? <laughs> Musicians were definitely in the small numbers, so yeah. he was, you know, welcomed. So he was quickly. here from Muskegon, yep. went through, and, and then he and he captured this, 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 this historic role, if you will. Yeah. yeah. How long did he serve? Don't know? That's surprising with a question. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not the uh, that, lead historian. I'm Kurt okay. Troutman, MCC sure. professor. Is, sure. So, <laughs> so it, it came to me that we were going to do a, a statue for him down at the LST yeah. 393. Correct. And they came to you and yeah. said, get to work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tell me about where we are in the process now. Yeah, so actually next week, this coming week, the you know, this process, making this piece of bronze will be finished. Really? In Oregon, Illinois. Our casting of Illinois is the foundry that's handling it. Okay. And uh, they've been at it for about the same time as this, six months, so 
Sculpting took a little longer. That was another six months of working on a life-size figure. Uh, he's six and a half foot tall. Is so, it really? what's it going to weigh? With <laughs> Probably about eight hundred pounds. Is that right? <laughs> That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So the work is all getting done. It's going to be finished up here pretty quick. When it gets done being cast, what do you have to do after that? Is there a finishing process? <laughs> uh, the patina is the finishing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. He's about in 12 pieces. A piece like this becomes three during the casting. Okay. You know, you can't cast that much bronze right, in right, one right. pour. So her head was one piece, the, you know, the chest, and then this arm was another chunk. Okay. So taking it back together and then blending it out and getting this kind of brown patina with uh, liver of sulfur. <laughs> right. So that's exactly what's happening. To November right 10th now. is the date that you're you're looking at the unveiling down to LST. <laughs> tell me tell me about the event. What are we going to see? Yeah, right there? rain or shine. We'll be gathering at two o'clock there, and we'll have a dedication ceremony. So various speakers from the community will be present, Great <laughs> including you. Yeah, including Wait, me. Is it tough for you to get up and talk about what you did, or is that the fun part? That's the fun part. Is it? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> tell me about the future. What do you what do you foresee for your career? I mean, is this is this something? I'm not joking. I, when I ask you this, is this something you can make an honest living at? Oh, definitely. Really? Definitely. Yes. So um, there's a lot of this work that pops up around the country, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's um, unfortunately growing smaller. Sure. But um, uh, Gary Castile, who I apprenticed with, kind of keeps a model of one at the foundry, one being sculpted, and one in the works. You right. know, the right. beginning stages. So as long as you can get that cycle of three going or more, yep. you can make a living at it. Good so. for you, man. That's pretty <laughs> That's <the> exciting. <laughs> so you've got you've got one done. You've got one in the foundry. Yep. What's the next one in the pipe? A couple more in the works for Illinois. Um, Julia Lathrop, who is a social justice leader, okay. woman suffrage, uh, in Rockford, Illinois, okay. and. Uh, Another Catholic church related in Naperville sure. piece for them. So, so you're going to stay busy, man. <laughs> stay That's busy. awesome. <laughs> Great work. Do you have a website? I do. Arinorris.us. Okay. And that has both my independent work and the commission work. So awesome stuff. Next man. range. <laughs> Thinking about Art Prize somewhere down the line? Not sure about Art Prize. Um, I think we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you can see this beautiful sculpture out here at MCC in the November 10th. Make sure you're down at the LST 393. Celebrate this guy. It's amazing stuff you got going on here, man. I wish I, wish I had half the talent to do I mean stick figures that's as far as I ever got when it came to art and it shows right because <laughs> here I am on camera and here you are being here <laughs> well thank you very much all right Norris we'll put the links up here on Muskegon channel and we wish you the best in your career man and thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us thank best you. of luck on the boogie woogie boogie boogie, 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 boogie. it's going to be down at the LST on November 10th all the details are right here on the Muskegon channel